You remember Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. God who had sundry times and in divers manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. God spoke audibly with Adam and Eve. God came down into the garden that he made into the garden where he put the man and the woman. God had a conversation with Adam. As a matter of fact, in Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, God spoke and the book says, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying of every tree, of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. After God put Adam to sleep and made a woman, after God brought that woman to the man, Listen to Adam in Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 23. Your Bible says, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Make no mistake about it, God created man and woman before sin entered into the world. There was nothing wrong with being naked. There was no shame before sin entered into the world. Look at verse 25 of Genesis chapter 2. Your Bible says, are you there? And they both, and they were both naked the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Why all of a sudden, Adam said, I was naked, I was afraid, and I was ashamed. Why? Because Adam had done something. Because he heard the wrong person. Adam listened to Eve, but Eve listened to the serpent. The serpent listened to Satan. Satan in the serpent. The serpent, Satan in Eve. The serpent, Satan and Eve in Adam. You see, the serpent got in, or the Satan got in the serpent's ear. The serpent and Satan got into Eve's ear. And I want you to know that Eve, the serpent, and Satan got into Adam's ear. You got to be careful as to who you allow to get into your ear. Well, I don't mean any harm today. I, I'm not going to bother anybody. I'm just going to preach my little sermon and, and take my seat. Because I don't want anybody up in here thinking I'm meddling with somebody. So I, I just rather stick with Adam and Eve and leave you all alone. Because you're going to see it the way you want to see it anyway. Eve, when sin entered into the world, Eve understood that she had violated the commandment of God. When sin entered into the world, Adam understood that he had violated the word of God. It was not until sin entered that Adam and Eve were ashamed of their nakedness. You see, their eyes had become open. Open to what? They were already open. They could see the trees. 
Their eyes were open. They could see the fruit on the trees. Their eyes were open. They could see each other. Their eyes were open. But what's the significance about the idea that their eyes were open? I'll tell you because of sin. Their eyes are now open to sin and shame before sin. Nakedness was not shamefulness before sin. They didn't have a problem observing each other before sin. You see, sin will, will take you further than you want to go. Sin, they say, will keep you longer than you want to stay. Sin will do more than you imagine. Because when sin comes, death comes. God had already told them the day you eat thereof, you're going to die. Oh, we remember Romans chapter 6 and verse number 23. Thank God for part B. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. We remember Romans chapter 5 and verse number 12. Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. For death is passed upon all men for that all have sin. Sin pays off in death. But let me tell you, before they die physically, they were ashamed. Ashamed because their eyes were open to sin. And I maintain that when our eyes are open to sin, not the sins of others, but to our own sins, we ought to feel like Adam and Eve. We ought to feel ashamed. Sin isn't a good thing. When we walk around in sin, doesn't matter what it is. The Bible says six things do it the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. I'm in Proverbs 6, 16 and 17. I need you to understand today that it doesn't matter what the sin is. It ought to bring shame. I ought to be ashamed of my sin. Ought to be ashamed because God doesn't want me in sin. Everybody in here ought to be ashamed. Why? Because of sin. We shouldn't just laugh at Eve because of her sins. We shouldn't just laugh at Adam because of his sin. For the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Come back to Genesis chapter 3 for a moment. Let me look at verse number 7 again. And then I'll take this message where it needs to go. Are you in Genesis chapter 3? And verse number 7. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. I want to tell this church, we cannot devise a plan to hide our sins. I said we cannot devise a plan to hide our sins. Adam and Eve knew they had sinned. And they were naked. So what did they try to do? They tried to cover it up. And I stopped by to tell you today, we cannot come up with a plan to cover our sins. Well, I need to tell you what God did. Because sin must be dealt with. But it must be dealt with by God. And God knows how to deal with sin. As a matter of fact, he's the only one that really knows how to deal with
with sin. Well, you may say, well, preacher, I know how to deal with it, but it's only because of God and what he has given us in his word. Look at Genesis 3 and verse 21. And unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothes them. Well, I just stopped by to tell you fig leaf aprons just won't do it. I said fig leaf aprons just won't do it. In other words, the fig leaves will only cover so much. But God fixed them up. And from this day or to other days or from that day to this day, nakedness is still a sin. Oh yes, I told Brother Daniels the other day, we don't preach like we used to. Years ago, oh, we used to preach on beaches, bikinis, and beer. Y'all don't, don't have to say, man, I, I know that's strange to some of y'all. What is he talking about? Beaches, bikinis, and beer. Well, preacher, talk about the beaches, but don't damn mess with the bikinis and the beer. <laughs> uh, uh, can I get a witness up in here? Oh, I'll be finished here in a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm not jealous hearted, but, but I just believe if you say amen for one preacher, you ought to say amen for another. Isn't that all right? There was a time we preached against little skippy clothes or that people wear in public. Well, let me tell you, we don't bother that stuff anymore because the very preachers who used to preach against it are now in their skippy clothes. But I stopped by to let you know that God has not changed his mind. Just like God clothed Adam and Eve, he's trying to clothe us today. I know you say, well, bikinis belong on a beach. Well, they may belong on a beach, but I want to know, do they belong on a Christian on a beach? Y'all don't have to say, man, don't tell me, well, you know, we wear the kind of clothes that's conducive to the atmosphere. Well, I stopped in here to let you know, if God didn't let Adam and Eve wear the kind of clothes that was conducive, that were uh, conducive to the atmosphere, why do you think he wants you wearing the clothes that's conducive to the atmosphere? Well, they were on African soil, you see. And I need you to understand this. By them being naked, they didn't get cold, you see. Before sin, there was no hot and cold. And there was no summer and, and winter. Somebody ought to hear me up in here. You see, the temperature was perfect for naked people. Yes, it was. But then God did something. God clothed them because the fig leaf clothes were not good enough. So God put some coats of skin and clothes them. Am I correct about it? Now, I don't mean anybody any harm. I know the other day it was 90 degrees. And I can just see some of us, uh-huh, a little bit too hot, coming out of our stuff. Well, I want you to know that God wants his children to be clothed. If you don't mind, come over or uh, the first Timothy. Uh, you all got time uh, for me to work on some of this? Because every now and then we need to talk to God's people about God's word. Uh, come on over to first Timothy or uh, the chapter is two. I'm going to pick up at verse number nine. This won't cost you anything. I got to change this message a little bit. Because I don't want to hurt and harm anybody. I just believe it's time for us as God's children to come together on God's book and do God's thing God's way. Are you in 1 Timothy 2 and verse number 9? The Bible said in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Am I correct about it? 
Now, I just want to know what in the world is modest apparel. I just need to find out what in the world is he talking about. You see that word, modest? Yes, comios. We get a word, cosmetic. Are you all listening? Orderly, a decorum. It's of good behavior. I said it's decorous. Every woman and man needs to understand that when you step out in public, you ought to step out orderly. You see, when you're naked, that's unorderly. When you're naked, that's out of order. Out of order with whom? Out of order with God. After sin entered the world, Adam and Eve were out of order. They knew they were naked. God put them back in order by clothing them. From that day to this day, God wants women to have on enough clothes so they can look orderly. Men, you ought to have on enough. Don't tell me about what's conducive to the atmosphere. I, you need to talk to God. Take that up with the Lord. When it comes down to apparel, he's talking about how we dress, the clothing that we wear. Our clothes ought to be orderly arranged on our bodies. And there are just certain parts that ought to be covered up. Are you all paying attention? You see, I remember growing up, I had mama, I had little mama, and I had big mama. You see, big mama was little mama's mama, and mama was daddy's mama. Are you all paying attention? And then you got, I got to get you to get big mama was little mama's mama. Little mama was my daddy's mama. But I called my mama mama. I called her mama. My grandmama was little mama, and my great-grandmama was big mama. Well, I didn't spend too much time with big mama, but I spent a whole lot of time with little mama. And let me tell you how decorous little mama used to be. Yes, she was a church-going woman, but every now and then we would go up to little mama, and we would ask her for a dime. That's all we needed. Yeah, we can get some cookies and some candy. Isn't that right? Just with a dime. And you know what little mama would do? She would have her money in a rag. You call it a handkerchief. And it would be in her bosom. But when little mama got ready to give you a dime, she'd turn around like this. Uh-huh, she would go in that bosom. Yeah, I'm unbuttoned now. I'm unbuttoning now. She would go in that bosom, get that dime out of that handkerchief, button her stuff back up, and then when she turned around, she would hand you a dime. Now that was my grandmama. Didn't want me looking over in her bosom. And that's my grandmama. You know we don't do funny stuff like that. But that was my grandmama. But now man, women, not even, a, even kin to you. Let you see all up in him. No shame. I don't know where you all thought I was going, but I know where I'm going. No shame. And listen, honey, listen. Don't, 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 don't let folk tell you, you you don't need makeup. Some women do need makeup. Don't let these guys tell you, honey, you know, show it. You need covering up. You know you got too much up there for us to be looking off into. And then you wonder why folk keep staring at you. Honey, you're showing too much. Last time y'all heard a sermon like this. I'm tired every time I walk around you, I got to turn my head. Making me think the problem is with me. The problem is not with me. You're too naked. Well, some 
of these dresses, man, look like somebody poured you into it. Can't hardly walk. That's too much. That's too revealing. Honey, any time we can see more than you want us to see. Well, some people may want us to see it. It's too much. Nakedness is sinful in the church, outside the church building. You mean to tell me we can't go to the beach? You, you, you figure it out. I'm talking about bikinis. Help me, Jesus. This church is not going to help me. Can you imagine? After God clothed Adam and Eve, can you imagine? Eve getting up one morning, said, Adam, I'm not putting back on those clothes God made. Now by this time, Genesis 4-1, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the law. Children now have come into the world. Can you imagine Eve getting up and saying to Adam, I'm not going to put on these clothes that God made anymore. Look at Cain and Abel looking at naked Eve. Now somebody needs to hear me. If you dress up in your house, why in the world will you go out your house without being dressed up? Some of your husband be, I know some of your husband tell you, honey, you gonna wear all of that to bed? And then you go out door with nothing hardly on, but you wear all of that. I made my mind up. I'm, I'm not going to be fooling around with people no more. I know how to say it. I'm not <laughs> going to bother anyone any longer. But no, no, I'm telling you, we need a word from the Lord. We need to know how to carry ourselves as Christians. Women ought to dress in modest apparel. Men ought to dress and become in holiness. We need to understand that we have a world to save and we can't save a world when we act and look just like the world. God raised the question, Adam, who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Now let's go back to Genesis 3 and watch this. I say let's go back to Genesis 3. And let's watch this. I'm almost finished. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to hold you all day. I'm almost finished. I think I've gotten the message across that I want to get across. I just want to tell everybody up in here, every woman up in here, dress modestly. I want to tell every man up in here, dress modestly. I want to tell every man and every woman up in here, let's dress orderly. Let's do what God wants us to do. Let's stop putting temptation on each other. Yeah, your stuff too tight, you tempting me. Yeah, uh-huh, your stuff cut too low, you tempting me. 
your stuff up too high, you're tempting me. You know, in Matthew 6 and verse number 13, Jesus said, and lead us not into temptation. So I won't tempt you and you don't tempt me. Isn't that all right? So let's go back to Genesis 3 and let's work on this thing so I can take my seat. Are you in Genesis 3? Look at verse number 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Now church, that's question number one. Where art thou? Now you need to understand this. God did not ask the question because he didn't know where Adam was. God knew where he was. But this question is a, an accountability question. In other words, God is calling on Adam to give an account of himself. God is saying, Adam, I need you to show up. Come before me. I need to examine you. I need to take a look at you. Adam comes up before the Lord. He said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? That's question number two. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Now Adam answered, question number one, he came before God. But question number two, I want you to watch this. Adam is going to skip question number two and answer question number three. I need you to catch it. Adam, like us, we want to answer stuff in our order. But we need to deal with it in God's order. Now watch this. Look at verse 11. And he said, who told thee? That thou was naked. Did you catch it? Now that's question what? Number two. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? So that's question what? Number three. Now listen to Adam. And the man said, the woman whom thou gave it to be with me, she gave me of the tree. And I did eat. Wait a minute. Wait one Mississippi. Cotton picking minute. What about question number two? Who told thee that thou was naked? Adam didn't answer that. Adam jumped to question number three. He answered that woman. That's based upon the question. Has thou eaten of the tree? Uh, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. So Adam responded, the woman which thou gave it to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. That's question number three. But what about number two? Who told thee that thou was naked? I want to know, did Adam ever answer God's question? Who told thee? Well, I want to ask you some questions today. Who told thee that you could be saved any way you want to be saved? Who told thee that one church is as good as another church? Who told thee that baptism is not essential to salvation? Who told thee? I want to know. I'm not going to deal with all of that. I'm just asking some questions. Because I want to know who told thee. God asked Adam a question when it came down to his nakedness. Who told thee that thou was naked? Well, since Adam didn't try to answer the question, number two, let's go back up to verse number four. In Genesis 3, are you all still with me? The Bible says, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doeth know 
that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Now watch this. Adam is naked, but who told thee thou was naked? The serpent told Eve, listen, honey, when you eat this tree, your eyes are going to be open. I want you to get it. It's all because of Satan. Eve ate of the tree and her eyes were open. What's the effect of eating the tree? Eyes open and now she sees she's naked. You got to catch this. She was naked before and it didn't matter. But now her eyes are open. Open to what? Open to sin. Open to what? Open to shame. Open to what? Open to nakedness. Who told Adam that he was naked? Eve had to tell Adam. Because when Eve ate, y'all got to listen to me. Her eyes were open. Before Adam ate, his eyes still closed to nakedness. Don't be looking at me like I don't know what I'm talking about. Eve, eyes open. Open to what? Sin. Open to what? Shame. Open to what? Nakedness. Adam is still closed to sin. Satan, shame, and nakedness. It was not until Adam ate so who you think told Adam? Now y'all don't know what an implication is. Who you think told Adam? No wonder Adam said, that woman which thou gave it to be with me. I heard her. I listened. To her. Who told thee? Eve, who told you that your eyes will be open and you're no good and evil? The serpent told me. Can you imagine Eve saying to Adam, hey honey, you're naked. Adam didn't look back at her and say, you are too. Because he had not sinned yet. Oh, Lord Jesus. Honey, you look different. Adam, baby, do you really know how fine you are? Before sin, they didn't talk like that. Hey, baby, let's do it up. They didn't talk like that before sin. When sin enters into the world, even women that don't look good, you'll lie to them. When you want what they have, you tell them they're fine and you know in your heart they're not fine. And the reason being is because the first sin is hooked to a lie. A lot of men get women based on lies. And when they really come to the knowledge of the truth, they hate that they fail for that lie. (laughs) 
Now, you ain't going to preach this sermon now. <laughs> I just thought I'd tell her. She, come on up here and get this microphone. <laughs> you see how women will do you? <laughs> That's what happened to Eve, Adam. That's what happened to Adam. Eve got loud. <laughs> Start telling him all of this stuff she could see that he couldn't see. Y'all ever thought about the text like that? Yeah, Eve telling Adam all of this stuff she could see that he couldn't see. And then he ate. Both of them are now in sin. The devil has always been a part of a lie. John 8, 44. Jesus said, ye of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye would do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So what does Satan do? He lies. So what do you think serpent did to Eve? He lied. Now how you think Eve got Adam to eat? Y'all don't want to come on talk to me now. How you think Eve got Adam to eat? She heard a lie, believed a lie, and I guarantee you, she told Adam the same lie she heard. The devil will try to deceive you today, but he's always using something else or someone else. Jesus came to this earth Chose him 12 apostles while he was on earth. Satan looked at that and said, I'll get me some. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. The Bible said, for such a false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is of no great thing if his ministers be transformed under ministers of righteousness. We got to understand that every man that claims to be sent from God is not sent from God. And we have to understand Matthew 7 and verse 15. Jesus said, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raven and wolves. By their fruits... Ye shall know them. We need to understand when Jesus died on the cross, he died for one church, shed his blood for one church. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. Your Bible says, for he is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of petition between us having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for the make of himself of twain, one new man, so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Jesus wants to reconcile the whole world in one body. Well, if the world is gonna be reconciled in one body, that tells me that the world needs to come out of the world. The people of the world need to come out of the world and enter into the one body. Well, the one body is the one church because the church is his body. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 22 and 23. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church which is his body. Isn't that right? The church is his body. He died to reconcile all of us in one body. That means he died 
to reconcile all of us in one church because the one church is the one body. And I want to know if you are in a denomination, who told thee that thou should be in a denomination? I want to know who told thee. Based upon the word of God, Jesus didn't build back one church. And I want this church to understand I'm going to preach this one church until I go back to the grave. I came from the dust. I'm going back to the dust. But I'm going to preach this one body, this one church, until I go back to where I came from. And I don't mean back to Mississippi. I'm talking about back to the dust. The Bible is right. Acts 20 and verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all of the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made your overseer to feed the church of God which he, that's God the Son, that's Christ, has purchased with his own blood. So if you are in a denomination today, I want to ask the question, who told thee? Who told you? Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Have you all ever noticed how God styles the church as he styles a husband and a wife? Why? Because there's an intimate relationship between a husband and a wife and God wants us as his children to have an intimate relationship with him. It's not sensual, it's spiritual. So how do you get that relationship? God gives you two things when you get in Christ. He gives you a relationship and he gives you a fellowship. How do you get into both? First of all, in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That's when you enter that relationship and fellowship when you are baptized into the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you something as I go to my seat. When you get baptized into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you become a member of that one body, the church of Christ, and you will always have that relationship. But if you're going to keep that fellowship, 1 John 1 and 7, but if we walk in the light as he, is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. You can lose your fellowship and keep your relationship. When you are in God's family, you are in God's family. But now you need to live like a Christian to keep that fellowship in the family. We have some families in here probably right now that, that you got a family member you haven't spoken to in 20 years. But they're still in your family. You have relationship with them. That's a family relationship. But you don't have fellowship. God does us the same way. You get baptized into the church and you don't act right, don't live right, don't dress right, don't talk right, and don't even drink right. You lose that fellowship, but you still have a relationship because you're in the family. So God is calling on us to live right. You're here today and you're not a child of God. You need to say yes to Jesus. Acts 8 and verse 18 and 8. Acts 18 8. Christopher, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the law with all his house, and many of the Corinthians hear and believe and were baptized. It's implied that they repented and confessed Christ to be the Son of God. What's your desire today? 
I've said enough. You go home with the question. Who told thee? I don't care what the issue is. Ask yourself, who told thee? Come on, come on, come on, my brother. I I'm finished. See, I want the members to come back tonight. I'm finished. Jesus you want to be a Christian? Come on. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain. He's calling for you. calling for you. Why not say yes to the master? 